Iraq commander of Syria's Western-backed opposition has fled across the border to Turkey. The move by General Salim Idris of the Free Syrian Army comes after fighters from the Islamic Front seized his forces' bases in northern Syria. The move prompted the U.S. to suspend all non-lethal aid to Syrian rebels. White House spokesperson Josh Ernest confirmed the freeze. We have seen the reports that Islamic Front forces have seized the, uh, the headquarters in question uh, and warehouses belonging to the Supreme Military Council, and we're obviously concerned by those reports. We're still gathering facts and consulting with General Idris and the Supreme Military Council staff to inventory the status of U.S. equipment and supplies that have been provided to the SMC. Uh, as a result of this situation, as you pointed out, the United States has suspended all further deliveries of non-lethal assistance into northern Syria. A prominent Syrian lawyer, human rights activist and leader of the anti-government protest movement has been reported missing in a rebel-controlled Damascus suburb. Razan Zaytuna disappeared from her apartment along with her husband and two other activists after receiving threats from Islamist groups. Following the chemical attack on Gluta earlier this year, Zaytuna appeared on Democracy Now! to describe the carnage. We started to visit the medical points in Gluta, to where injured were removed, and we couldn't believe our eyes. I haven't seen such death in my whole life. People were lying on the ground, in hallways, on roadsides, in hundreds. There haven't been enough medical staffs to treat them. Witnesses say Hassan Zaytuna's apartment was found ransacked, with laptops and other belongings removed. You can go to democracynow.org to see all of our interviews with the Syrian activist. The families of two Spanish journalists have come forward to reveal the pair's kidnapping in Syria. Journalists Javier Espinosa and photographer Ricardo Garcia Villanova were reportedly seized by al-Qaeda-linked rebels in September. Espinosa's wife, Monica Prieto, urge the kidnappers to set them free. The, the, the idea that the, all the journalists covering Syria are risking their lives for the Syrian revolution, for, I mean, for the Syrian people, for the Syrian freedom, democracy, etc. So uh, I think uh, no Syrians in, um, in the Islamic State, they should be, I mean, they should think carefully about what are they doing for the revolution, for the Syrian country, for the Syrian freedom by kidnapping journalists. The families say they've come forward because of an impasse in talks with the pair's captors. The two were apparently trying to leave Syria near the border with Turkey when they were seized. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global grassroots news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org today. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.